This stove does have auto ignition and the igniter circuit actually starts up as soon as you start the stove. This stove can also be operated with a thermostat. When we turn the stove on initially, like so, all of the fans are going to come on on high and they do this to clear the, the burn pot out. And then it's going to slowly go down to where we have it set. Right now we have it set for one and we have the fan, uh, the room fan for one. And as we turn up the heat output, the combustion motor ramps up and as we move this up, the blower for the room amps up. When you have it on a high setting, your blower automatically goes up to three. Um, so if we turn this up to high, you'll see our blower comes up to medium. That's so that the stove doesn't overheat. Pressing it once more advances it down to the lowest setting, highest setting, and then back to the lowest setting. And it's going to ramp itself back down. You want to turn the stove off, you simply hit the feed button, it turns off the feed and the stove will run out of pellets and it will shut itself off. One of the coolest things about the room blower right here is actually on while we're running the stove, while we're starting the stove up. And that doesn't usually happen until, on uh, most stoves, until it gets to a uh, proof of fire. And the reason why this is running is really cool. The wall behind the stove where the air blows for that comes out right here, the igniter passes through it. And in the igniter passage, there's a weep hole in there. So the air that's being blown out of the stove is being forced into that weep hole in the igniter so that the igniter as it shoots into the burn pot is actually a pressurized ignition system. Uh, all right, so here is the electrical schematic for how all the wires connect up on this. And one of the things about the stove is that all of your sensors that control the auger motor are in line with one another on the feed circuit. So we have a high limit auto reset, which is normally closed, and this is above the room blower. So if the room blower um, is not working properly, the back of the stove will overheat and it will shut off the feed. All right, so if you're not getting any feeding, this is the one that I would check first. Make sure that this is conductive uh, and make sure that your room blower is working right. The next is going to be the hopper lid switch and that's these brown wires right here. The hopper lid, if it's open, it's going to open the circuit and it's going to cut off the feed. Um, and because pellets actually go in there, uh, that can be something that can get damaged if you put too many pellets in and it kind of crushes it down or if a pellet is uh, on top of the, uh, the switch for that. Um, on top of the little arm underneath the arm so it can't depress that can uh, take your feed circuit out the pressure switch is on the other side and that is also NC which is normally closed so when at room temperature it's conductive if there's any back pressure in the vent it's going to open that circuit so to test this switch really quickly if you're not getting any feed and this one's okay and this one's okay uh, disconnect the orange hose from the exhaust and uh, that will relieve the pressure off of the switch and see if it will feed then and if it does feed then you know that you have a problem in the vent and then the last one is the high, the, the other high limit normally closed switch and this is above the ash pan and if the ash pan is uh, got a smoldering fire or something in there it's gonna set that switch uh, to open and that will cut off your auger feed circuit. And uh, if you have something like that, you can take the ash pan out, let it cool down, and then try it again, uh, and get rid of whatever mess is in there. Your igniter is on its own circuit. That's this little jumper right here. And that is going to be on whenever you turn the stove on. If the uh, igniter is not getting hot, uh, the first thing that I would take a look at is there is a red wire with a fuse on it. Open that cap up and make sure that there is no, uh, that the fuse is good. Uh, you can test the fuse itself to make sure power is flowing through it. 
uh, or if it's uh, if it's exploded, then you know that it's uh, it's probably bad. Uh, and if it is exploded, it's probably exploded because your igniter shorted out. Uh, if that's good, and you still don't get the igniter, you can disconnect the igniter wires right here and test those for continuity and see if you have uh, electricity flowing through it. If you don't, you're going to replace the igniter. We got our multimeter with our alligator clips, and we have it set to unity, or uh, continuity rather. And when uh, there, if there is a circuit present, closed circuit, it will sound off. Um, over on your uh, combustion blower, the low limit. The low limit, when the stove is cold, the common, uh, when you first start the stove up, uh, the common is going to be on this black wire right here, which is the convection blower. So your auger motor and your combustion blower are going to be coming back on uh, the number two wire, which is black, back to this Molex right here. And after 21 minutes, the control board is going to flip a relay. This is your timer relay. And it's going to cut that circuit. And everything will shut off if the low limit is not closed by then. So this switch right here, which is on the other side of the combustion motor housing, at 140 degrees, that's going to close. And then at 21 minutes, when the relay inside the control board uh, is, uh, is flipped over, all of your commons are gonna come back now on this wire, onto the blue wire back into the control board. Uh, and then when you shut the stove off, you're basically going to be shutting off the circuit that flows through all of the sensors. Your feed motor is not going to get any fuel. Its fire is going to go out. And when the fire goes out and the temperature drops 20 degrees below 140, which is 120 degrees, this low limit is going to switch open again. And at that point in time, there's going to be no return circuit back to the board and the stove is going to be turned itself off. Uh, and that's basically how this whole stove works.